and we are starting a new series today on the channel called Getting to Know Sourdough. There are so many endless possibilities when it comes to sourdough baking. You can make cookies, breads, crackers, pancakes, all sorts of things. With the video today, I'm going to teach you how to make your own sourdough starter from scratch just using flour and water. What is sourdough? Sourdough is naturally leavened bread. The sourdough starter uses wild grown yeast and lactic acid bacteria in order to naturally raise your bread. I'd like to read you a quick snippet about lactic acid bacteria because it's vital to the sourdough process. Lactic acid bacteria interacts with the bread and other nutrients. These bacteria destroy certain types of acid commonly found in other types of bread, which increases the availability of nutrients like folate, potassium, and magnesium. What this means is that sourdough items are easier for you to digest and more nutrient dense. One thing I want to note before we begin, sourdough making is a time consuming process. Please make sure you set dedicated time aside in order to learn this process fully. I will say though, once you have mastered the process, it will be so easy for you and it becomes second nature. You'll know exactly how much to feed your starter, when to feed it, so that you can get bread or cookies or whatever you want ready in time for whatever time frame you need. Another thing is during this process of growing your own starter and making your first loaf of bread, I just want to point out that you probably are going to make mistakes and your starter might fail. And that's okay. That's part of the learning process. It took me three months and over 20 plus times of trying to grow my own starter before I learned the process. And once I did, I tried it again and again, and it worked every time with success. So once you get the hang of it and you get in the groove, you'll be off in no time making all of your sourdough creations. But just be compassionate with yourself and give yourself some grace to make mistakes. It's okay, I promise you. Maybe that's what you need to hear. I'll tell you right now, it is okay to make mistakes. The first artisan bread I made with my sourdough starter was as hard as a brick <laughs> and didn't raise properly. So it's okay. But I promise you, every time you make a mistake, you learn something new. Now that we discussed everything, let's get started. Here's what you will need to begin your own sourdough starter. Two pint-sized mason jars, one cloth cover with a rubber band or string, one weck jar, a kitchen scale that measures in grams, I want to make a quick note here about the filtered water and the organic flour that we're going to use. Filtered water is necessary in order for the bacteria to grow properly. So you have to use either well water or filtered water. You cannot use city water that contains chemicals or it will stop the growth of the bacteria. When it comes to the flour, you're going to use organic, unbleached, all-purpose flour. There are other flours that you can use for this process. However, this video is just for organic, unbleached, all-purpose flour. You need to stay with the exact same flour the entire time during the growth process. You can change out your flour once you have an active live starter that you're using. However, we will discuss that later on in this video. Your first big decision is deciding whether you want to feed your starter in the morning or in the evening. Just make sure that you do it the same time each day. For me, I am beginning my sourdough starter in the morning around 8 o'clock. Please make sure that your mason jar along with your weck jar or your spatula that you're going to use to stir your starter with is clean and sterile. Turn on your scale and take your clean mason jar and place it on the scale. 
Tear the scale and make sure that the units are set to grams. We are going to add 20 grams of our organic, all-purpose, unbleached flour. Tear the scale. Add 15 to 20 grams of filtered or well water. I added 15 grams of water. Now stir to combine them. You want the texture to be thicker than pancake batter. Let's talk about the texture and the water for a moment. When I was trying to grow my own starter, everyone said equal parts water and flour, but that kept failing for me. It was always way too runny. I decided to lower the water amount and the starter worked without an issue. I'm not sure why this is the case, but it worked for me. As you can see, this is the texture that we're looking for with your sourdough starter. Cover with a breathable cloth and a rubber band, and we're gonna allow this to sit out on our counter for 24 hours. Pictured here on the right is my current active starter that I have fed and I am leaving it sit out so that I can make some bread with it later. This is what your starter will eventually look like. There's no action with our starter so far. It doesn't look any different than it did yesterday, but that's okay. As you can see, it's not as thick as it was when we first mixed it yesterday. And that's what I was saying about how it will change as it sits. But this is the exact consistency we are looking for. It's not watery and it's not too thick. I wanna take a moment to mention here about the color of my sourdough starter. It's a bit of a tan color and that's due to the flour that I'm using. Fortunately, I'm able to get locally sourced, organically grown, all-purpose unbleached flour and it has a little bit of a tan color but yours will still work perfectly fine with the store-bought organic unbleached all-purpose flour. We're going to add 20 grams of flour and 15 to 20 grams of filtered water. Once I stirred it around I realized that it was just a little too dry yet so I added another gram of water just to loosen up the texture. As you can see here, it's still nice and thick without lumps and it's not watery, but it's also starting to have a little bit of stretch to it, which is what we want. We're gonna cover it with our cloth again, put our rubber band on and set it on the counter for another 24 hours. you may see some bubbles starting to form. However, you might not, and that's okay. The dough does have a little bit of puffiness to it though, and it's a bit stickier than the previous day. Today, we're gonna add 30 grams of flour and 25 to 30 grams of water. At this point, you will start to get a feel for how much water you need to add. So that's why I am leaving it open-ended, 25 to 30 grams, whatever you think you need in order to make your starter the right consistency. Stir to mix, cover it, and leave it on the counter for another 24 hours. The starter will be puffier today, and it's going to have a nice sticky texture along with a bit of a stretch. Today is the first day that we will remove sourdough discard. The reason we're going to discard some of this sourdough starter is that if we kept feeding this starter and not discarding, we would end up not being able to feed it enough in order for it to thrive. Kind of like the whole less is more, that's exactly with this case. In the future, once our starter is developed, I will not 
be getting rid of sourdough discard. I will be using it in other recipes, but that is for later videos. So today we are going to remove half of the starter before we begin feeding. You won't have to measure to remove half the starter. Just kind of eyeball it and see what looks like half. Here, I'm using a clean pint-sized mason jar in order to put the starter in that we're going to keep. With the starter we kept, we're gonna feed it 30 grams of flour and 25 to 30 grams of water. You're going to stir it, and today is the first day that we are going to return to our starter in 12 hours in order to give it a stir. Cover the jar and come back to it in 12 hours. It's been 12 hours and we are now ready to stir our starter. This is so exciting because at this stage, we can start to see bubbles forming, which is an excellent sign of a healthy starter. Give the starter a nice little stir. As you can see, it's looking nice and stretchy here and it has a good consistency. And then put the cover back on and put it back on the counter for another 12 hours. At this point, we know exactly what we have to do. Add 30 grams of flour and 25 to 30 grams of water. Stir to mix. Cover the jar and revisit it in 12 hours for another gentle stir. Please don't mind Princess on the counter. She was hungry and wanted me to get her wet food. So she was pretty insistent about being up here and was also very interested in the sourdough starter. <laughs> so today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sourdough starter that's in our pint-sized jar. As you can see, there's a lot of bubbles and this means it's really active and really healthy. This is exactly what you wanna see by day six. We're gonna take this sourdough starter and we're going to now put it into our WEC jar. And the reason we're gonna shift it to our WEC jar is because we need more space. We're now going to start feeding it more so that we have more sourdough starter in order to make baked goods. We're gonna do 30 grams of flour and 25 to 30 grams of water. Stir to incorporate, and then we're gonna come back to it in 12 hours again to give it a light stir. What I've done here is I've put a rubber band around the WEC jar, and I did this for a really good reason. Check it every couple of hours, and you're gonna see that the sourdough starter is starting to raise up above the line that you marked with the rubber band. The line you marked with the rubber band is where your starter was after you first fed it today. As you can see, it is going past the line. This is a great indicator of a starter that is almost ready to use. This was at nighttime right before I stirred this starter and I just wanted to show you, look at all the bubbles inside. And it's gonna have that wonderful tangy sourdough smell. Oh, it's so amazing. By day seven, your starter should be raising above your rubber band line, coming back down, and it also should be nice and bubbly. And you can see there's bubbles on the top, and there are also bubbles on the side of the jar. Now we're gonna have two options. The first option is you are ready to make bread. I knew that I wanted to make bread today with this starter, so I got up early this morning, it's 5 a.m., and I'm feeding my starter 50 grams of flour and 45 to 50 grams of water. With a strong starter and a warm kitchen, we will be ready to make our first loaf of artisan bread within eight to 10 hours. I wanna note here that normally with my artisan bread, 
I feed my sourdough starter the night before. So I'll feed it at about eight or nine o'clock at night. And then I will get up the next morning at 6 a.m. and begin my artisan bread. Just from a timing perspective, that works out better for me. But it's whatever works best for you. I also wanna mention here that with the artisan bread, it takes about eight hours or so to make. From the time you mix the ingredients, you do your stretch and folds, and then you let it bulk rise for six hours. Afterwards, you place it in the refrigerator to let it bulk ferment about another eight hours. So just keep this in mind when you wanna start your artisan bread. We're gonna mix it up and set it on our counter. Option number two is if you are not quite ready yet to make bread at this time. We're gonna temporarily pause our sourdough starter. So you would take your starter right off the counter, cover it with the actual lid that came with your weck jar and place it in your refrigerator for a few days. By putting it in the refrigerator, it slows the fermentation and feeding process and this is a great way to pause it on and off in between your bakes. When you are ready the next day or the day after to make your loaf of bread, you're gonna pull it out of the fridge, feed it 50 grams of flour, 45 to 50 grams of water, stir it, cover it, and set it on your counter for eight to 10 hours. Then you'll be ready to make your first loaf of artisan bread. Hi! Now we're going to talk about what to do with your starter and how to maintain your starter now that you've actively grown a starter. Congratulations! Yay! It's very exciting. There is some maintenance to it, however, but it's not too difficult. And I promise it isn't as time consuming as growing a starter. There are different ways to maintain your sourdough starter now that it is live and active. There's a lot of variations out there, so you do what works best for you. I'm gonna tell you what I do in order to maintain my starter, and then you can decide for yourself. Starters can be kept on the countertop with a regular feeding and a regular discard every 24 hours. Sometimes I do that because I'll know three days in a row I will want to make sourdough baked goods, whether it's cinnamon rolls or crackers, artisan bread, sourdough sandwich bread. So I will keep it on the counter for several days. However, what I normally do is I take my starter out when I know I'm going to want to make a sourdough baked good. Here's an example. Tomorrow, I want to start a loaf of sourdough bread in the morning at 6 a.m. I'm going to take my sourdough starter out tonight at about probably seven or eight o'clock. I'm going to feed it. The feeding part for you is going to be always equal parts flour and water. And then as much starter as you're going to need for your baked good. If your weck jar already has a decent amount of sourdough starter in it, you won't need to feed it as much because it will activate it and you will have a decent amount. For me, I'm gonna feed my sourdough starter 50 grams of flour and 45 to 50 grams of water tonight. Stir it and I'll let it sit out on the counter. You always wanna cover your starter too when it is out on the counter or in the refrigerator. And this keeps all your moisture in and you don't want any other bacteria to get in there to throw off your culture. Then at 6 a.m. I'm gonna get up tomorrow morning and I'm gonna mix a loaf of artisan sourdough bread. When I'm done adding my sourdough starter into the mixture, I'm going to feed it. Depending on how much starter's in the jar, I'm probably only gonna feed it 30 grams of flour and 25 to 30 grams of water because I don't have anything else I need to make. So I'm gonna do that in the morning after I use the starter, mix it up, put the lid on it, and put it back in the refrigerator. When you put your sourdough starter in the refrigerator, that slows down the fermentation process. And it allows it to sit in the refrigerator 
for about four to five days without having to feed it again. After four to five days though, you will notice a little bit of a separation between the starter and maybe a little bit of water. So you take your starter out. If you don't need your starter to make anything in four or five days, you're going to discard some of the starter and then you'll feed it again, your 30 grams of flour and 25 to 30 grams of water, stir it up, put the lid back on and put it back in the fridge. And you can keep it alive and active like that indefinitely. It, it will continue to work. About feeding your starter too. It is very, very flexible. You just need to remember that what you don't want to have happen is to have a large jar of sourdough starter that I'm just going to make a guess that's like in total 500 grams of starter and you keep feeding it every day. You're going to get to a point where you cannot feed it enough in order to have 500 grams of starter thrive, which is why you discard. Sourdough discard can be very useful and it can be used. Until you get the hang of discarding sourdough starter and feeding and the whole process, you might not wanna make anything with sourdough discard until you fully get how your starter responds and how much you need and how it works because you might end up discarding too much and that can happen. I've never discarded too much. I will say um, you can have very little sourdough starter left, feed it and it will grow again and thrive. But it's just a learning curve. You will learn and you will understand it and it will be very simple and easy to you. I promise. In the next video, I'm going to teach you how to make your first loaf of artisan bread with the sourdough starter that you just grew. Go to that video next in order to learn how to do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. I hope you have success with your sourdough starter and with your sourdough career. I don't think it's a career, but it does require a lot of time and dedication to first learn and master the process. I'll see everyone in the next video. Take care.